Hello everyone, you guys wanted to see my Linux setup. So instead of bragging about how cool I am in this esoteric niche that none of the girls will ever understand, how about I share my experience, the pros and cons of switching to Linux while bragging about how cool I am in this esoteric niche that none of the girls will ever understand. So this is my work laptop. My office forced me to use Ubuntu because they just don't understand how cool Arch is. But that didn't stop me from using a tiling windows manager. So what you see here isn't the default called Trash Ubuntu, but a lightweight GUI that manages Windows better than well, Windows. Plus features like Waybar, which is this cool strip on top, and Rofi, using which I can launch apps, pull up power menu, change wallpapers, launch clipboard, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even switch themes of my GUI. But the real reason I use a tiling Windows manager is productivity. You see, in Windows, you have to search everything with your eyes. Why? It is so annoying to just move your eyes and search for something. This is a naive brute force approach where you have to scan through every page pixel of the screen, meaning it takes big off end time. It zones me out on my flow state and pisses on my concentration. In Linux, however, I know for sure that no matter what the fuck happens on this planet, each time whenever I press Windows plus 1, my teams will open, Windows plus 2, browser will open, Windows plus 3, IntelliJ will open, Windows plus 4, YouTube music, which is very important. Now this is big off 1. When I'm inside my browser, control 1 opens, chat GPT, control 2 opens Claude, Control 3 opens Grok, and Control D opens Google Search. How fucking efficient is this? I have a similar setup in Windows, but god, it's so slow and buggy. And before you start commenting, I am sorry, Neo Wim Femboy addicts, but IntelliJ has irreplicable features for Scala. It has a deep build tool integration, extremely smart coding assistant, and advanced debugging and testing tools tailored for Scala. I don't even know how they built some of these features, honestly. But please let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, I would love to switch back to NeoVim. However, because I am very cool, I naturally use Vim motions. Once you get used to them, you can go back. Man, I pity my colleagues who still use mouse to drag, copy paste, switch tabs, scroll. Oh god. And it's not just about Vim motions. All my co-workers use default Ubuntu. How do they not even change the wallpaper, bro? When they see my setup, uh, sorry, when they experience my setup, see my programs, switching faster than their eyes can keep up with. Watch me hop around the code base without even touching my mouse and keyboard from just pure aura. All they can do is drop their jaw. Okay, but seriously, none of this, nothing is even comparable to the power of package managers. In short, Windows being the reincarnation of the devil have no proper package management system because of which any dev who has coded for more than a few months would hate to work on Windows. Linux being the gods divine has the best package management systems. A lot of commercial softwares need a ton of configurations, multiple docker containers and ports up and running. This won't be possible without a very flexible and smart package manager. I have wasted at least 277 quadrillion brain cells trying to debug my TensorFlow and React Native code on Windows because the packages were conflicting. Like you don't even realize it's an issue with the packages until you have almost given up on your life. I somehow got to a point where I couldn't even use TensorFlow on my PC because some hidden TensorFlow nightly packages somehow got installed and it became impossible to remove them. I scrapped away the entire your python and pip system away from my windows and somehow still the issue just did not get fixed and i was unable to use expo 50 plus versions for some similar reasons also whenever i have an internal issue in windows especially driver issues for graphics and networking it is most likely not going to get fixed because the drivers are proprietary and microsoft only cares about building a monopoly adding ai to everything and making humanity suffer in their monstrosity of the operation systems that hogs half of my SSD for no fucking reason. Spyware, it is spyware, okay? Yes, I hate Windows. <laughs> This is not even a review of Linux at this point. My hatred for this operating system is apparent. My hate for Microsoft is so much that I keep on going off script. All they fucking do is diversity hire and add AI. How is this company still even alive, guys? <laughs> 
If I run into a similar issue on Linux, I am confident that I can fix it. I can easily delete any component and reinstall the congruent version because of the foundational pillars on which stands the principal philosophy of Unix. Each program is built in a modular way with small components connected through clean and well-defined interfaces. The design prioritizes clarity and simplicity over clever or obscure solutions. Programs are intentionally kept small, simple and focused instead of becoming large complex monoliths. And most importantly, each program is meant to do only one thing and do it really well. The best thing about Linux is that I can rigorously toy around with my whole system without any fear of breaking something. It's like a sea of Lego blocks of which I can craft my own unique architecture customized to my needs and without any bloatware. I use a very simple and minimal setup since when you use Linux as a daily driver, you don't want unnecessary complexity, aesthetic overhaul or things that will drag down your productivity. You need a deterministic system to minimize chores like app management, searching files and command over your shell on your fingertips. These are all the repositories I'm currently using and of course I will link them in the description. But there's currently a YouTube bug going around that if you watch a video over 90% from a channel you haven't subscribed to, you get a malware in your system. So you know what to do and thanks for watching. Malware!